Good morning, church. It is such a pleasure to worship the Lord together. As the scripture says, how beautiful it is that brethren come together and worship the Lord. And uh, greetings to everyone who is uh, uh, participating in our worship service in person, as well as uh, our members who are joining us through Zoom. And uh, also we would like to greet our members who are watching our worship service uh, in YouTube. Uh, kindly notice next week, uh, uh, our pastor Dan and I won't be available at, uh, we won't be uh, coming to the church. We have decided to visit uh, a partnering church in Hyderabad, uh, in Vanastalipuram. Kindly uh, continue praying uh, for us so that we may grow in relationships so that uh, uh, as a church, we may have some more fruit and we may grow as a body of Christ together in this uh, city. Uh, if Vijay could, uh, yeah. Uh, today it is quite surprising uh, that everything from the beginning of the service uh, was aligned or was synchronized with the topic I wanted to uh, discuss with you today, uh, that is worship. Our uh, service opener was uh, about worship. Of course, I, thought I put it uh, related to the uh, topic that we'll be discussing, but I could really feel the presence of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is working through all of our hearts as Mano was still leading the service also. He helped us to focus more unto the Lord and especially in terms of uh, worship. It is such a uh, great thing that the spirit of God is working in each and every one of us, uh, leading us towards uh, one direction and uh, we bless God for that reason. So the topic I'm going to uh, discuss or that I'm going to talk uh, is worship. It is a very familiar topic, and you might have heard hundreds of sermon on this. So many people might have spoken so many things, uh, but uh, at the same time, it is such a big subject and vast subject which we cannot cover everything. So uh, I will be dealing several aspects of worship only, but I may not be able to speak all the aspects of the worships because of that some of my comments uh, may sound uh, um, complete. In that sense, please don't be offended. If you have any questions or doubts, you can get back to me on that uh, and we can provide the clarifications. But basically this time I wanted to focus on the attitude of worship. What is this worship is about and what kind of attitude as a believer of Jesus Christ we should be having. So as an introduction part, let us look at some facts about worship. So worship is a very integral part of Christian life. And that is the very reason we do all our works very fast. And at any cost, we, we, may, we make some time and to come to the church so that we worship the Lord. And even in our personal times, uh, we have we continue our personal prayers, reading of scripture, and what are the spiritual disciplines that we have. All these things, they come under one single title we can call that is worship. And these are, whenever we talk about worship, most of the times worship is often referred to singing. Okay, but it is not. It is not just singing. It is just a form of worship. Worship is not, singing is not worship altogether. It is just one aspect of it. But worship is a very broad term in general. Okay. It concludes, sorry, it includes singing, praising, praying, preaching, and there are some rituals also which are part of the worship. Okay. And living a life that glorifies God. Okay, let us not misunderstand. Every Sunday we come, okay, we have a worship part. That means only from uh, right after opening prayer till the sermon goes, what all the songs we sing, those that's only worship. Let us not be dear, misunderstand like that. You know, the modern day church, uh, we in fact, the best thing I have, best word I can use is the modern day church buyers. They are looking for the kind of music in the church and they go to the church. If somebody is providing the kind of music they like, according to their favorite genre, then they are comfortable. Because for them, worship is more about music. 
so and you know very well uh, you might have heard so many stories also even in our own city in our own uh, but in not in our church but in some other churches you might have heard uh, people complaining saying the youth are very comfortable during the worship and during the singing right after the singing they are disappearing they don't, they don't want to be in church you know this is a problem many churches are facing there today because for them god worship and all these things are limited to singing but let us not misunderstand that worship is only singing i was the other day i was talking to pastor about worship and uh, he i asked him what is your opinion about it he said for me and uh, for worship involves three p's number one is praising number two is praying number three is preaching all these three things are usually we do in the church service on sunday of course there are so many other things also to be added but one thing i wanted to tell from here is worship is not just singing but everything that we do from the day from the moment we step in church till we step out of the church and even grand worship is worship that starts right after the church till we close the gates okay and uh, i don't want to bring the controversy of can rituals be part of christian worship but would like to just make a statement that rituals are still part of christian worship there are certain rituals that we follow and um, there, there is nothing wrong in including certain meaningful rituals in the worship and then one thing we need to understand that is um, music is not the origin of worship of course i desire for a good music in the worship service uh, from a long time i have a desire that we should get into some kind of contemporary music where our youth and children they can be very much interested and focused on music is very good and that opens our hearts and minds and creates a mood so that we can worship but music cannot be the origin of worship just like we see in some groups like the moment the drum beats goes fast the spirit descends on the people okay the moment the silent music starts the people's hearts and all will be connected to the divine in the sky okay uh, i am not saying it is wrong the music may create some kind of atmosphere where our mind may not be distracted but can be focused on the lord but it is not the origin of the worship music helps us it is a very great thing even david he ask us to worship the lord with many instruments okay music is not the origin of the worship but it it can be just an expression of worship and uh, we can worship individually in informal ways which we can do in our daily devotions or at homes or you know work as we go to work or when we are personally uh, focus on god and also formally we can do the worship uh, uh, as a group and even with the worship uh, we can worship the lord with a, a worship director or worship leader that's what we come together and we worship and uh, another aspect is people speak about work uh, worship is worship it is talking about what is that something that you value the most which is the most worthiest thing for you so where do you focus where your focus is that is what worship is about for some people they worship money some people may worship job some people may worship their fashion and their looks and beauty and uh, some worship the lord some worship their theologies you know some of us might have gone through that i, I had my own journey where i was working worshiping my theology where god brought uh, me to repentance and uh, uh, led me towards uh, worshiping the lord in his own ways in his own the in the revelation that he has given so there are so many kind of things that are included in worship okay so many of them are good some of them are not good uh, some practices are good uh, so we don't we can be it, it is an inclusive term worship so we don't need to divide churches based on the kind of worship style we have unfortunately that is happening in the world just because these people are not singing hymns there are churches that are separated there are churches who are separated because they are not singing andhra christian hymnals they are say bringing some other songs 
some uh, so uh, in, there are certain churches truly i have seen few churches which are divided because they are not playing guitar there so it is unfortunately these are all part of worship these all include so we don't need to divide churches based on the kind of uh, music we want or any kind of uh, the reasons that we have mentioned before however now we look into the bible what does the bible talk about worship so the first time bible speaks about worship was in genesis chapter 22 uh, thanks to roshan for reading uh, the scripture genesis chapter 22 where uh, abraham was asked to sacrifice his son and he took a uh, sacrifice and uh, as he was going on to the mountain to sacrifice his son he told he used the word called worship for the very first time and that we can find in genesis 22 verse 5 where abraham said to his young man stay here with the donkey and the lad uh, donkey the lad and i will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you this is the first time this word has been used when when abraham used this word he was uh, he has his own connotation like every word has its own connotation and every person as they use a word they have their own connotations in very in particular cultures the word means different okay in various cultures the word means different so abraham was using this very word but this word in the time of abraham from the background of abraham means actually sacrifice because abraham came from pagan backgrounds heathen background who for whom the worship is all about the ritual of sacrifice so if you are giving sacrifice means that is all worship is and singing raising hand all these things are not part of it the very act of sacrifice itself was worship but if you read this story we understand abraham had gone through a journey and he changed his understanding also okay so the word worship has been used for the first time here and then uh, if you go further in genesis chapter 22 words uh, 9 to 10 Uh, there it is written then they came to the place which god had told them and abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order uh, in order and he bound isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood and abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son but the angel of the lord called uh, called to him from heaven and said abraham abraham words 13 then abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was ram caught in a uh, thicket by its horns okay so abraham went and he was about to sacrifice his son he put he laid uh, isaac on the wood and uh, he was about to kill him okay that is the very act of worship according to uh, pagans but here we find one more, one interesting thing that is but the angel of the call to abraham from heaven and said abraham abraham then the abraham lifted his eyes if abraham lifted his eyes means what was abraham doing abraham wore, he bowed down and he fell on his face the moment he heard the voice of the lord he fell on his face why am i focusing this word more now is because the hebrew word that is used in the place of worship is shaka okay i don't know the right pronunciation however the hebrew word for worship is shaka which is bow down okay abraham if so imagine if abraham is killing his son worship is only killing the son on the altar where he must be looking he must be looking at the altar but it is said he he was bowed i mean he lifted his eyes okay the moment he heard the voice of the lord he realized it is the lord and he could not help but bowing down before him that is the very meaning of the word worship also so uh, he uh, he lifted his eyes and then he found a ram 
and then uh, he sacrificed. That is a story we know very well. But one thing we can clearly understand from here is in Abraham's worship, his worship was not just ritual there. And he took the next upgrade of the worship that is realizing the Lord and bowing down right in front of him, submitting himself to him. This word has been used 172 times and all, all, these, all these 172 times in, which was used in the Bible, it is used in relation with bowing down. This is a surprising thing for me also. I thought uh, in, there are many other places where it can be used in different forms and all. But this word from Genesis till the revelation in everywhere it has been used to relate and to speak about bowing down and uh, nothing else. And uh, and and other examples, few examples I would like to bring before you. One we can find in. Uh, uh, as they are doing the sacrifices and all, especially in Exodus chapter 34, verse 8, and Moses made hasty and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped him. Here also this word used in relation to bowing down. Double, two times this has been used, bowing down. Moses bowed down and I guess Moses bowed down. Like This is an, ex ex uh, this is an incident where uh, Moses, he had a revelation of the Lord uh, through the crack of this uh, rock, you know, where God revealed himself to him uh, because Moses, God, Moses cannot look at God directly. So God, uh, God said through the crack, he would reveal himself. And uh, Moses, by the moment, even God, uh, he realized the presence of the Lord, the revelation of the Lord through the crack of the stone, he bowed down and he bowed down. That is the attitude of worship. We can see. And in the Old Testament, when we talk about worship, as I said, sacrificial system that comes to our mind more. Even in Leviticus, you know what? In the entire book of Leviticus, this worship, this word has been used only once. There are too many, from the beginning, too many sacrifices in the book of Leviticus. But this word used only once, and that is also as God was revealing about, talking about the commandments. You know, you shall not have any other God before me and you shall not bow down to anybody. Okay. So here also we see the worship is completely related to bowing down. So we, one, one more thing we can see that it has, it is separate from the sacrifices. Book of Leviticus is full of sacrifices. But there, only once it has been used, and that also not in relation to sacrifices, but in relation to submitting yourself to uh, worship. This, so what I wanted to say is sacrifice is not the worship itself. It, it is part of the worship, but sacrifice is not the worship itself. So Abraham offered sacrificed. Uh, his worship started as he bowed down before the Lord. So his connotation of worship has changed from Genesis chapter 22, we see, but in the pagans, it was only a ritual. And a uh, few more examples also we can see in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, we know very well where devil encountered uh, Jesus and was tempting him. What was the last temptation he brought? If you bow down to me, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. Then Jesus uh, uh, told Satan, uh, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him you shall serve. Here also the word is bowing down. Satan was saying bowing down and Jesus, when he used the Greek word, that is also bowing down. And not only this, even the final things we can see in book of Revelations, even in book of Revelation, uh, there are, it's actually 20 times this word has been used. You go through all these 20 verses and the um, context is the same. When the, living creatures give uh, when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sit on the throne, who lives forever and ever, 
24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast the crowns before the throne look at the picture they looked at the one who is living on the throne and it is written they they fall down before him you know in india we have very good uh, picture of this falling down before him even in the old testament we say he fell on his face this is the word we use but in our culture we forgot what this falling on our face it doesn't mean covering our face actually it mean in telugu you know we call it sastanga namaskaram you know lying down on the floor face in the ground that is a bowing down we are talking about the moment people realize the presence of the lord they are bowing down in front of him not just kneeling down also now bowing down for us is even this is also bowing down it is just sastanga namaskaram falling on the floor and uh worshiping the lord so from genesis till the revelation everywhere the word worship has been used it was talking more about fall uh, it was talking more about bowing down and uh, uh it is it's talking about falling down on the face and even the greek word that is used in the new testament uh proskuneo present again i'm saying that this is not my language to get right pronunciation okay which uh, with this is the greek word used in uh, all the places in the new testament where worship was mentioned this also means to fall upon the knees and touch the ground with forehead okay you can remember you can understand this and uh, as a profound ex- expression of profound reverence that is the meaning of the word so worshiping is about bowing down so am i suggesting the church to come to church every time and bow down or do sastanga namaskara huh? no this is not just about a physical posture but it's about the attitude bowing down attitude of bowing down bowing down means the bowing down means the attitude of humility and self surrender i can say surrender of but i would like to say self surrender to just to press it on uh, press the meaning uh, press on the meaning to say bowing down which means we are humbling ourselves and surrendering not by force but by surrendering voluntarily before the lord that is what worship is about it is about in a heart which is humbled which forgets everything that uh, they have they have they earned their their education their beauty their money okay whatever they have as apostle paul says all the things i have i counted them as rubbish and humbling ourselves and surrendering ourselves before the lord how does this surrendering takes place how does this bowing down hum- humbling ourselves and worshiping the lord this in this form takes place as i said this is not about posture it's about the attitude of humility and uh, surrender how does it take place the answer is the nature of god when we look at the nature of god it uh, it demands and commands us to humble ourselves and to surrender you know god god is matchless like the truth you must believe and much more like beauty you fall in love with said andrew rabe of a preacher god is more like a beauty he is he is a truth that we can just believe we may not be able to reason more but we just need to accept and he is much more like a beauty actually the word beauty does not make justification when we talk about god the right word that can make much more justification is sublime it is not just beauty it is sublime and uh, your sublime means that you can see in the background some kind of picture you know just imagine uh, you are on uh, we are you are on in uh, on any ocean in say, sitting in the uh, ship where there are huge where there was a cyclone or uh, you know such thing is happening around what would happen you know the very time the only time we feel sea is so huge and scary was during the cyclones the moment we go onto the sea we realize how big the sea is 
we cannot help ourselves the kind it creates some kind of fear in our heart i'm not saying it is just because of the cyclone it is about the potential that the sea has okay and in my hometown we have srisalam project uh, some of you might have seen our project okay uh, it is a 985 feet pro deep project means the depth of the the level of water maximum level is 985 feet so when the, the gates are open when reservoir is full when the gates are open the the water it falls down from 985 feet and it jumps back like you know they call it a support dam there is some kind of thing so where it jumps and it jumps more than 450 feet okay where the water such a huge water it becomes vapor can you understand uh, see the water liquid it is becoming vapor not because of the temperature but because of the capacity strength it has and because of the depth it has so when we go there actually hearing the sound itself it uh, we feel like you know in telugu we say gunda jali payind ant so out of here our heart will just is, uh, drops like we feel that way if you go to niagara falls okay i haven't visited um, but i'm just trying to find some pictures which uh, i can explain okay the moment we go to the niagara falls imagine there are places um, even there is a boat ride at niagara falls okay if you are in the boat if you are taking the boat ride and the water is falling what would happen that is called something that scares us okay at the same time there is a pleasure seeing that we love to see that there is a beauty in it that is called the sublime beauty okay and if you see a, a huge mountain and you find like k2 kind of thing k2 is a mountain the moment because i used it because it is the steepest mountain uh, uh, everest you may not be able to see directly but k2 you can see directly which will be quite steep and the moment we see those i'm telling you for sure i have seen similar things that's why what i felt i'm sharing with you you won't be able to be yourself <laughs> that humbles us okay the moment we come in contact with the sublime beauty we humble ourselves and uh, anybody have any experience like when there was a heavy rain continuously jesus may come tomorrow or today <laughs> you know sometimes when these kind of things happen they get, they take our courage off and we look unto somebody who can save us from that so if only this ocean is like that if the mountain is like that what about the one who created this what about the presence in in new sorry in old testament certain places it is written uh, you know when god met children of israel the mountain was shaking imagine if you are there i believe that sound would be much louder and uh, uh, much louder than the water sound in my hometown or in niagara falls the moment it came people fell down on their faces means sastanga namaskaram bowing down before the lord the same experience moses had so what do we learn from this the sublime beauty the moment we go before the beauty what happens is we cannot Uh, we hold our courage but we humble ourselves and we surrender ourselves if tsunami is coming of course it won't come in hyderabad imagine it came what can we do nothing but running to the higher place if we could not reach nothing but surrendering ourselves to the tsunami so that is the sublime beauty is about and god is of such beauty so and this beauty it never subjects to any form of understanding and it never subjects to any one's picture also and this beauty cannot be explained see we can see the, the uh, storm here but this picture cannot explain that and if any language or any picture or any communication if it thinks that it captured beauty that is the greatest uh, uh, in biblical language heresy no language no expression no art can ever capture the beauty in completion but what it can do is it can only inspire us to go and see some of you might have felt i should go and see niagara falls or you might have imagined or 
you might have uh, this fail to come and visit my place my house house doors are open you can come okay so it reminds us that we cannot capture this beauty and it never submits but it what happens is the beauty cannot be formulated or conceptualized and this beauty humbles us and this beauty demands and commands our submission which is called worship it is it not just demands i'm telling you this beauty not just demands it commands us the moment we go there we cannot help ourselves but bowing down before the beauty bowing down and submitting ourselves before the sublime i'm talking about the beauty of the lord itself that's what scripture says worship the lord in the beauty of his holiness you know when the lord came when god was in the tabernacle what was happening around people saw the smoke and they were bowing down they cannot help themselves but worship the lord it is the same for us so yeah worship is a response in awe when you saw beautiful himalayan mountain or k2 and you said wow if you said that that is called worship you saw the beauty of the lord and said wow that is worship it is not just about singing you don't need any songs there okay you don't need any words there in fact you will be spellbound you won't be able to speak anything so worship is a response in awe and let me tell you at this point only here because it makes sense god doesn't need our worship number one number two our worship is not going to make any uh, change in god okay our worship cannot affect god today i'm happy because you sang well today i'm not happy because you did not sing well so that won't be there <laughs> any time okay but this worship it influences us and we worship because it completes it completes our joy when you saw the beauty and imagine you went to this ketu and you saw the beauty of the mountain you saw himalayan beauty and you and you returned and imagine you did not get opportunity to speak about your trip what would happen <laughs> there will be a great emptiness within us isn't it okay so when we speak about the beauty we experienced when we speak about uh, you know uh, the experience that we had it completes our joy so you spoke and you said i went to so many i saw himalayan mountains and then you will feel ha ah, now i am feeling ha ah. okay so the beauty uh, it this worship it completes our joy it doesn't require god and that's why i'm saying god did not create us to worship him but we can't help but we worship him he did not create us for this purpose but if we really encounter with him we cannot help ourselves as we see the beauty we cannot help ourselves but saying wow having said that it might have reminded you your school times you know can anybody say what is this newton's third law okay newton's third law which says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction if you pull the spring with the equal with the equal strength it will go back if you throw a ball at the wall if not equal at least to with the with the velocity it will come back so newton said every uh, action there is an equal and opposite reaction and this principle it works always in worship so that is why every time every time a revelation is given to us and it will have a response so in bible the worship always in all these verses i mentioned this pattern can be seen god reveals something and they bow down and worship okay the input from god is revealing himself the reaction from us is bowing down and worshiping this pattern is in everywhere examples is abraham the moment he heard the voice of the lord he fell on his face 
and he was worshiping the lord and thomas you remember thomas so you remember peter jesus came and he asked him to cast his net at a particular place and uh, he caught the fish what happened immediately peter said i am a sinner oh lord stay away from me and in other that is another kind of worship form of worship saying you are such a holy person he recognized him and he uh, he submitted himself saying i am a sinner he is an uneducated man that's why that was his expression look at thomas what happened when jesus asked thomas to put his finger on his uh, nail pierced hands what did jesus thomas say my lord my god he bowed down at the revelation of god so when god encounters so when people encounter god they cannot help themselves but bowing down and worshiping the lord this is one kind one side of this uh, this formula this pattern it works always so in our lives also as we are studying the scripture as we are reading his message as we are uh, listening to his message as we are meditating on the lord as we are listening to some songs sometimes it can be in your own life experience god can reveal himself to you and i am sure that you all must be having some or other of such kind of uh, encounters so every day as we are having these kind of encounters we cannot help ourselves but we worship the lord so this is the pattern of worship throughout the bible and this is the pattern of worship that is going to be uh, in our in your life and my life and this worship pattern has another side of it that is uh as we worship the sorry as we receive the revelation from god we cannot help but we worship him and as we worship god who is revealed he uh, sorry as we worship god reveals his power in our lives look at the story of paul and silas they were arrested and uh, they were in jail um so while they were worshiping god revealed his strength the prison was open and the, we we know the miracle that happened look at uh, joshua chapter 6 verse 15 to 16 the walls of jericho falling of walls of jericho okay this is another example which is very important for us to notice these walls of jericho they did not just fall in any uh, by any sound okay you know from in the old testament we see very clearly god commanded people not to work on the seventh day only for six days they have to work but look at this passage we find that god asked these people to go around the city on the seventh day that going for the war on the seventh day which is completely unique in the entire old testament scripture he asked them to go on the seventh day and uh, what happened what is there in the uh what, what is there in uh, in that procession on the seventh day what is uh, what is there on the seventh day that they rose early but the drawing of the day uh, sorry dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner on the day they uh, sorry on that day only they marched around the city seven times and the seventh time it happened when the priest blew the trumpet and the joshua said people shout for the lord has given you the city if you look at these actually this process we will we will find few things number 1 marching people were march number 2 ark ark of the covenant was there and number 3 priests are there number 4 trumpets and a music number 5 people were shouting what does it remind you for me it reminds nothing but sunday service <laughs> okay now we changed but if you look at the old uh, uh, catholic or uh, anglican real liturgical worship okay now we evolved into other styles okay in the old testament and even in the early church we find liturgical worship services there what do we find in them incense priest walking some of us we have the background we know we used to march around the church and priest will be there music is there it is about sunday worship so when these people joined on the seventh day on the day of the lord and they worship the lord what happened the walls of jericho fell down the walls of jericho were destroyed when people come together to worship the lord in the church and the walls of sin uh, sinfulness and everything will be destroyed 
that is the message we find in book of joshua and uh, many times we don't notice that but it is completely talking about sunday worship okay so uh, this is what happens when we worship same law applies newton's third law when we worship god reveals his power when god reveals himself we will we cannot help but worship him when we worship god reveals his strength to us it reminds us about the importance of church worship you know it is we sometimes we may think i'll sort of stay at home and i worship the lord for myself but when we come together as a church and pray when we come together as a church and worship there is strength and god is going to uh, destroy the the devil's uh, strongholds the same songs we sang uh, even today in the worship so the corporate worship of the church destroys the dev- devil's strongholds and god's power will be revealed so i encourage all our members uh, whoever in hyderabad and whoever um, uh, not able to join us also uh, to join uh, to join us for the sunday worship because when we come together we'll be able to experience the power of god and we will be able to reveal the same power in and through our lives and so in conclusion what i would like to say in fact what the bible says is worship is an attitude of humility and complete surrender it's not just singing it is more than that of course singing and music are integral part of it and it is a response filled with awe due to the revelation of god just remember newton's law that works here and uh, revelation and response pattern of worship is the very relational uh, in nature it is the very sanctification process in our lives every time god reveals and we will be confirmed to image he reveals himself and we worship him and we worship him he reveals his power that that is going to be day to day uh, phenomena in life and uh, we can which we can call christian life every day god reveals we praise him we praise him he reveals his power and he reveals uh, more uh, so he uh, as he reveals more we worship him more and as we worship him more he reveals more that's a pattern we find and so let us humble ourselves before god and surrender ourselves in his presence so that our worship may be worship in truth and spirit thank you Thank you.